It's pretty easy though, like swordfish. That was like totally realistic, right? I never saw. <laughs> yeah, my, my setup at work, six monitors all day. With John Travolta standing over you with a gun? How else do you get your way through six different proxies and firewalls? Because <laughs> I'm a monitor! If I want to be a real hacker and be able to take down big establishments, I need elite hacking skills. Okay, that's not me, so we brought the hacker for the University of Texas, Jay Gore. Thanks for coming out, buddy. Dude, Jay Gore, you're we the best, be man. So talk me through, what is a DDoS not? Because in general, I would think that to take down a website, you secure the password, you get inside, and you say delete website, and then it's gone. Yeah, so with a DDoS, you're not actually compromising anything. You're not gaining any access to the server itself. You are just throwing traffic at it and hoping that you block other people from access a legitimate. So it's an availability attack rather than confidentiality. So recently we had one of the biggest denial of service attacks in history. Arguably the biggest cyber attack in the history of the internet. A mass outage on Friday of last week when several popular websites seemingly went offline for quite some time. Actually our main story today is about how there's a DDoS <laughs> happening and a lot of people can't get to Twitter and they're really mad. And people are saying that it was perpetrated by a bunch of kids using the Mirai malware. That's who they suspect anyway. Yes. So really Really, actually, anyone could have used this Mirai botnet because it was released open source to the internet. So anyone could be running this software and make their own botnet to attack their target. Now tell us what a botnet is. A botnet is any collection of a large number of uh, resources, usually computers, could be devices. This is a misconception when it comes to computer malware. People think that people are out to delete their hard drives or whatever. But if a virus infects your computer, usually what they're looking for is just a little bit of control so they can have your computer be one of an entire zombie zombie botnet of computers to where everybody can, can send an email at the same time or ping the same website at the same time? Yeah, so usually you're not the interesting target they're after. They're infecting your computer in order to accomplish some other goal to attack a, a higher profile site. And that's almost more insidious because uh, if everybody was deleting your files, you would know to use virus cleaner, but if they're quiet, discreet, kind of like actual human viruses, you know, something that makes you, gives you a little bit of a fever, makes you cough a little bit, just enough to propagate throughout it, it makes them a living host exactly what are the things that they did uh, to use these numbers to attack a single DNS server that took down Twitter and Spotify and Netflix and reddit for about six hours was taking advantage of the Internet of Things. Uh, so Internet of Things, um, very popular in recent days, is basically giving an operating system and a networking stack to a small embedded device, like your refrigerator or your toaster or your thermostat. They're all running a full operating system. They're running full code the same way that your laptop or desktop would. So like right now, even in the studio, we have Philips Hue lights everywhere, but these are actual miniature computers that are running, and we think of them in terms of soldiers that take orders, but they could give orders orders because they're connected to the internet. Absolutely, yeah. So what's kind of terrifying about this is that anyone with even rudimentary coding abilities can access these applications and wreak widespread havoc. Absolutely. So there's a commonly available tool out there right now, Low Orbit Ion Cannon, that you just download this application, fire it up on your computer, and now you're a bot who's able to launch deadly traffic against a particular victim, along so, with everyone else running this same tool. So if I'm hearing you correctly, every computer you install this software on becomes kind of a full-time job of doing nothing but ringing the doorbell of a certain server. And if you get enough computers running the same software all on the same target, they can't possibly keep up. Yep, that's the idea. You're overwhelming their ability to respond to you so that they can't respond to a legitimate person trying to buy something from their website. That's fascinating because you don't actually shut anything down. All you do is create a big enough crowd on the outside of whatever this establishment is that nobody can get in. Yes, it's a very temporary attack. Your goal is just to interrupt the availability of this site for a particular window of time. So one common attack would be, for example, uh, let's denial of service a sports wet betting website right before the big event. Oh shoot, so you place a bunch of bets early on and then you affect, you see that it's like, okay, uh, maybe maybe some fact has changed in the game and now you know this guy's mom died or whatever, you expect him to perform poorly, it changes the betting spread, so you're like, hey, no, block everybody from oh, getting wow. in there. I got in when the betting was good. Or even just say, come to the sports betting website and say, I'm gonna take down your website during these peak hours 
dollars for your business model unless you give me these bitcoins. On so the this side. is straight up extortion. Yep. So we have a very basic illustration of that, right? Yes. All right. For our illustration, because we don't want to actually engage in any kind of malware attack, we're going to do a virtual one. I will play the server. Right now, we have a live chat room. Hello, live chat room. Hello, there world. Are. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, good, 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 good. So let's consider this a miniature ask me anything. Hi, I'm a server. I'm here to answer the questions you have. I'm going to do as fast as a Brian Brushwood can answer questions. And in fact, uh, let's go ahead and start that right now. Everybody in the chat started asking me questions. I'll answer as many as I can. I'm sure I can. How tall am I? I am five foot seven inches. Got it. How do I juggle work and family? Uh, it's hard. You skipped one. Uh, what's my preferred Nick Schwood? Why is the sky blue? Because uh, what is three plus three six? Send me the files, please. Will do. Pickles as a hamburger topping? No. Who's your favorite co-host? Jason. There you go. Next. Who is your daddy and what does he do? Uh, is Al. And what does he do? Uh, uh, he's my dad. How many displays are in your studio? Ah, oh, jeez, one, two, three, four, a lot. What's the longest bike ride you've ever gone on? Uh, 100 miles. Were you a straight A student in high school or a troublemaker? No, B plus. Who's your third favorite magician? David Blaine. And what's your favorite fast food restaurant? Oh geez, Sonic. No, no, Taco Bell. All right, this is not bad, but I feel like I can kind of get through all of these. Uh, no, you've been skipping a lot of them. What, what, I, a, I'm getting through them. That is very poor I'm a performance. very popular server, Jason. I'm doing my best. So what does a DDoS look like? How different from that normal flow is it? You'd be getting thousands and thousands of requests from all different places, and you have no idea how to tell which one is a real person interested in the answer and which one is just a bot moving on to the next question as soon as they answer. So it might be one of them is somebody actually offering money and then meanwhile I can't find them in the sea of thousands of nonsense like, hey, are you there? Are you awake? Are you alive? Yep. Let's see what that would look like. Commence the DDoS attack. Are you there, Schwood? Uh, Have you yes. ever had Taco Bell Cantina that serves beer? Uh, yes. Is your no, belly no, button in here no. or an Audi? Any? What, uh, the windows are back. Have you ever been denied of service? Uh, are you there, Schwood? No. Uh, have you tried the Taco Bell Cantina that serves beer? I am. Have you tried okay. the Taco Bell Cantina that serves beer? Uh, uh, How many seagulls can you fit in a Mazda Miata? Uh, How hot lot. is the sun? Uh, Did your 12 year old do a, a good lot. question babysitting? Uh, uh, what's yes. your favorite beer? How much does Justin's uh, beard weigh? IPA. What is the best thing that's ever happened to you? Right, Who's I'm your sorry. third favorite magician? Windows or Mac? Uh, Any? <laughs> Are you there, <laughs> Schwinn? <laughs> 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 Have is you ever it? considered bathing in jello? jello? Have you ever tried the Taco Bell Cantina that serves beer? <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried turning <laughs> no, it off and on again? No. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Uh, where are the files? Have you tried turning it off and on again? Are you there, Schwinn? Are you there, Schwinn? Why is your hair spiky? Are you there, Schwinn? Are you there, Schwinn? Why is your hair spiky? I'm done. I'm done. I'm shutting down the server. I'm shutting down the server. <laughs> There's no way. This is inhumane treatment of perfectly fine servers. Oh, uh, did we just waterboard the Schwood server? Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm not okay. Also, what is this Taco Bell cantina that serves beer? Oh, there's one in Austin now. Okay. All right, hold on. Let me find out. See, this is a civilized conversation we're having now. <laughs> I feel bad for the server. That's very stressful. You know what I feel bad for? The IT person who has to answer for what's happening. So if you find yourself in the middle of a DDoS attack, what, what do you do? Is there anything you can do? It's basically already too late at that point. So with DDoSs, you want to prepare for the attack and have your mitigation strategies in place before it happens. You'll need to partner with a DDoS mitigation service. They'll usually have very huge pipes to the internet, uh, as well as some techniques like proof of work that causes the client to prove that it's a legitimate request. Basically, they're going to route you through their own connections to the internet so that they have control over the upstream before it gets to your server. So I think we learned something very valuable here today. You are a terrible server. Okay, yes, well, you're a terrible intermediary, but you're a bad API. Bad API. You're like a trash 80. Oh yeah, you're like an Apple IIe that I pooped on. <laughs> no, no, sorry. <laughs>